So here's a weird calculus question that I've seen sometimes. And it's not a hard question. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Uh, but it's just asked in a weird way. So it makes it hard. So let's look at the question. The functions f of x and g of x are continuous and differentiable everywhere. Okay. Then they start to give me the, they don't give me what the functions are, but they're giving me the information. f of 2 is equal to 3, g of 2 is equal to a, g prime of 2 is equal to b, etc. And f prime, so it's hard to see the prime here the way it's typed, but it's f prime, the slope at 2 is equal to 2. So what are they actually telling me with this information? They never tell me the functions, but let's just look at, let's look at f. They tell me that f of 2 is equal to 3. So they're saying that it goes through the point. So here's the f of x function as a function of x. They're telling me it goes through the point 2, 3. That's what they're saying here. And they're saying it goes through with a slope of 2. And that's all they're telling me. And then they give me likewise information for g. Okay. What's the actual question asking, though? They're asking me for this y prime at 2 if, well, let's look here. So if y is equal to f minus g, they're asking me what y prime is. So then y prime is equal to, well, that should just be g prime minus f prime. That's my regular differentiating across a minus sign rule. And they want that, they want that at 2. So I'm going to plug 2 in. So g prime at 2 is equal to b, according to the what they told me, and f prime at 2 is equal to 2, so b minus 2 is the answer. So that was fairly straightforward. It's just asked in a weird way. This next one, then, is basically saying, do you know how to do the product rule? y is equal to f times g, so y prime is equal to f prime g plus f g prime, and they want, it, they want the slope of this function at 2. So I'm going to be plugging in. So I need y prime at 2. I'm going to be plugging in 2 for all these pieces. So f prime at 2. f prime at 2 is equal to 2, according to this piece here, times g of 2 is equal to a. So 2a plus f of 2 is equal to 3 and g prime at 2 is equal to b. So it's is equal to b. So it's equal to 2a plus 3b. Again, not a hard question, just weird. This next one, and after I do a couple of them, now it starts to see, like you start to see, oh, this isn't actually too bad. g divided by f, they're basically saying, they're basically saying, show me you can do the quotient rule, by, and, but plug in those numbers so the answer is a number. So it's going to be derivative of the top times leave the bottom alone minus leave the top alone times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. So they're saying do quotient rule and now y prime at 2 is equal to now I'm just going to be plugging in these values. So g prime at 2 g prime at 2 is b times f at 2 is equal to 3. So, yeah, I would normally write 3b, but I'm going to write it b3 right now just to keep the pattern. Minus g of 2 times f prime at 2, which is 2. And all divided by the bottom squared, f at 2 is equal to 3, 3 squared 9. Let's, let's write this in a little bit more normal way. Uh, that, that would be 3b minus 2a all divided by 9. Lastly, it's a, uh, it's a chain rule. So y prime is equal to derivative of the, of the outside function, g prime, leave the middle alone, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So that's times f prime. And... Now we're just going to plug 2 in for x. So y prime at 2 is equal to g prime, okay, f of 2. 
f of 2 is 3. So that's g prime of 3 times f prime at 2. f prime at 2 is 2. Now I have to, what's g prime at 3? g prime at 3 is c. So this piece here is 3, so it's c times 2, or I'm going to write that as 2c. So the chain rule is the, I guess, the oddest question in here. They're all kind of odd because if we studied for a calculus exam, we're ready to differentiate functions, right? The derivative of a sine is cos. We're, we're good for that, right? Power rule, the derivative of ln 1 over x, we're good for that. But then they give us this question where they don't actually ask, they don't give me question, they don't give me functions, but they're asking me to differentiate. They're basically saying, do you know the plain, like the plain rules, not really applied to any specific function, but just in general with this information. Anyway, if you ever see this question on your exam, then it'll be a, an easy question instead of a weird question.